Hello, greetings. Welcome back to Mothman 1966. This is transmission number eight. We ended with the Mothman doing their little dance and looking beautiful in the sky. Now we'll find out what's next. Let's dive right into chapter nine. They called him the Hivaro of the Hills. What he did lacked a ritual component. It had nothing to do with the taxidermy business, even less with mummification. His shrunken animal heads were art, sold as collector's pieces. One afternoon, Liam, his only nephew, stole a beer. Bruh. Oh, my bad. Oof. Stole a bear head. The head had been emptied of viscera and was floating in a solution his uncle used in the early stages of the miniaturization process. Liam lifted the head out of the bucket, wiped it dry, and put it on, like a helmet. Yo, Liam is bugging, he's crazy. He stripped naked, left the house, and ran into the village. Liam entered the hall, entered the church, in the middle of mass, screaming at the top of his lungs. Dude, get a load of this guy. He went in there and freaked out all those churchgoers doing the most insane thing he could possibly do. I love it. Props to you. We love a little a little fun terrorism, a little pranking. Waving his arms up and down as if he were clawing. One of the congregation members pulled out a gun and shot him. On God? Y'all shot him? <laughs> oh, I guess he was possessed with the devil. But on God, you shot him? You remember the sheer terror you felt when you saw the bear man running towards the altar. What the f- <laughs> What? This is worse. This is a buff cat, buff boar, buff moose, some other buff creatures, buff Nova. <sighs> that's all, that's all he had to say. He said, Ugh. Worse? Worse than what? I'm all about pleasing Lou. Lou would love to hear this story. You tell him the story of Liam and his uncle, the Hivaro of the Hills. Somehow you feel safe telling them stories from the past. As for what's on the other side of the window, this fear can't be any more present. Got some clippings from the case. Liam's story was unfortunate event. It explains what happened to him, but it would also provide an all-too-easy explanation for other sightings in the area. The dog man, the owl woman. Many people told me stories about similar creatures in the moose. Lou adjusts his glasses. Lou Refill Hill. Lou, can I get a You think I don't know what they call me in town? It may be true that some people make up stuff to get a beer, but imaginations have limits. And in, and in the long run, we tend to rely on real experiences when telling a story. Yeah, 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 Holt, you know how you be like, oh, I had this crazy dream that my grandma got up on her bed and ran through the forest and was shooting at mothmen and moth people and buff bears and buff cats and buff beers and yeah and you're like yeah it's a dream and it was reality just like that mothman they're somehow related to the leonids and the gathering of all these creatures maybe he's right and all these creatures outside started to appear after the aerial dance of these mothmen the man they these guys came out here did a summoning dance and summoned all these 
bear men and whatnot. Oh my god, Grandma! Are you turning? Are you one of these things? Mothman? Why the name? Oh, dude, I didn't know he's gonna say that. I thought... Moths are attracted to light. You look at the sky illuminated by dozens and dozens of shooting stars and you nod. You like the name. Not because of Lou's explanation, but because you know how it's easy to squash a moth. Those aren't little tiny moths though, bro. Those are full grown men. This isn't the first time that the mothmen have appeared during the Leonids. Amongst some other references, they're mentioned in the oral histories of the Oji Ojibwe. Collected in the diaries of the Jesuit missionary in 1683. Who even dares to draw them? Man, they probably would hang you for drawing that. Maybe. Many believe that the creatures described in this diary are thunderbirds. But the Jesuits' drawings look more like mothmen. And the most interesting part is that he draws lines around them. Some researchers... Some researchers... Some researchers think that these lines are kinetic. A way of representing the speed of the creatures. Lou slides a finger across the glass following the trajectory of a shooting star in the sky. But I think these drawings depict Mothman with Leonids in the background. We're talking 1633, 1666, maybe. Look at these little bozos looking in here. Like, get your own, get out of my windows, man. Grandma? You feeling better? Grandma looks like she's sleeping. What are those shrieks, love? It's painful for you to see how confused she is. One second. You turn on the radio. Man, you could cut that white noise off. I don't want to hear this. Put, put on the- Put back on the Mothman wings. Static. To the left, to the left, because Beyonce said everything's in the box to the left. <laughs> it says, no matter which way you turn the dial, all you hear is static, and I turned it left three times. You never sung at the moose, not even those on those nights when everyone egged you on and the booze in your system had drowned your inhibitions. Almost without realizing it, you start singing the lullaby Elsie used to sing to make you sleep. Although more than 40 years have passed, the words come to your mind one after another. You close your eyes and caress your hair, singing all the time. Can we get a whole little serenade? Let me hear it. Can I hear it? I want to hear the serenade. Come on, this is not fair. You're just going to hold out on me like that. As soon as you feel the rhythmic beat breathing of your grandmother, you get up. Again. Again, Lou. Again, Lou, with the look. With the looks, he's serving. Look at the over the shoulder. I love it, you know. What was that? Lee! Bro, right about here, I was afraid someone was about to murder us, but I didn't. It worked out. It's Lee. Victoria tries to hug Lee while he babbles something you don't understand. And no time does he look up. Where the hell have you been? Victoria. This man has clearly been through it. I, I thought. But he's here. Give him some space. See, Holt knows what's up because he's the pretender guy. He likes to pretend he's six again and not deal with that crazy stuff he be seeing. So he's like, yep, this guy has saw some things. Just let him. Thank you. Lee takes a few seconds to start speaking. 
I think I got lost in the forest. You think? You think, Lee? Or, you know, because you were not with us. Babe, take it easy. Victoria grabs his arm and Lee tries to smile. I thought I heard the sound of a river and I felt someone looking at me. After walking for a while, the noise was deafening. But there was no river. Lee starts to cry. Oh, this is just some serious, serious. For him to cry in front of them, too? I already had him cry it out beforehand. Man got traumatized all over again. Look at the fade on this guy. Victoria tries to calm him down. As soon as he regains his composure, Lee keeps talking. And then came the white. I don't know how to explain it. It was as if I could see everything and nothing at the same time. And a goat looked up to the sky to watch the shooting stars. Oh, so are, so, so, so are these the animals in the forest that are, like, turning into, like, these, um, anthropomorphic creatures? And not, like, people? It stood on two legs, like, like this, you know? Just like us. Uh, yeah, we know. We know. What the hell is going on? This dude look he gonna fight, don't he? This guy. <laughs> I need hard eyes. I just like Lou. I like Lou a lot. I, I don't have hard eyes, but the heart is beating out of my chest, period. I think the time's come. Let me tell you a few things. Lou clears his throat and begins to speak. Although you can't stand his tics or his false dramatics, you want to know what's going on. The Leonids occur every 33 years. Some are intense like those of 1833, or the ones in 1866. Others are weak, 1899, for example. And those are the ones we have records of. You notice that Victoria grabs Lee's hand. Lou walks over to the window and points to the sky. This year, they're intense again. 1866, 1966... Why a hundred year difference and not 99? That's one year discrep- That one year discrepancy bothers me too. And I think it has to do with the problems of our calendar. And the periodic adjustments that we are forced to make. Tell me. Have you ever seen a medieval- Have you ever seen a medieval manuscript? No one answers. Just as you're about to open your mouth, Lou continues. They are usually adorned with warrior rabbits standing on two legs. <gasps> like the guy from Gar Rise of the Guardians? <laughs> Do you think these rabbits came from the imagination of medieval scribes alone? Mm, I mean, probably not. That, but that would be stupid. Those rabbits existed. And they were annihilated by man. Man, y'all killed all those animals? That's messed up. How'd you do it? Each meteor shower spawns new bipeds. And it was one of these storms that mankind arose. What is this? This guy is a massive. What makes us different from all of them is that we survived by destroying any other biped that came along. So what are you suggesting? Do you want to go out there and shoot these guys like I said zombies around? Because we don't have enough bullets for that, I don't think. Or by reducing them to the realm of gossip or fiction. Outside, the creatures begin to fight. <laughs> They're fighting each other. These guys. 
Why? What motivates them? And what about Lou? Should you believe everything he says? I don't think you don't have to believe what he says, but don't think he's telling you it to make fun of you or make like try and lie to you. He, you know, he just does his research and is like has his conclusions that he has. After all, Lou is a writer, a fiction writer or like a research writer. Your grandma's cough sounds like the noise of a tractor's engine refusing to start. Grandma. She bought that action. You have to kill them all. The voice within she speaks seems so come seems to come from much further back than her throat. I don't know how to do that voice, so you can do what I what I do. We had a secret weapon. And we would use it to finish off the upright beasts. So you remember this, or are you possessed? Just, just curious. But they decided to test it in the war. Oh, it's the gun you have in your garage. Elsie? What are you talking about? <laughs> I wanted to take the winnings from the battlefield. And they fly. Your grandma caresses her legs. I just want to finish the mission. Her, oh, is this the grandpa? Victoria and Lee look at each other. Lou walks up to you and tells you almost in a whisper, I bet. I bet the moles on your grandma's legs correspond exactly to her grandpa's wounds. Did you ever tell Lou about your grandma's legs? Uh, I don't think you did. You're confused and Lou seems to notice. It's not just free beers at the Moose Holt. People tell me things. Lou speaks softly, but his words resonate loudly in your head. The moles on your grandma's legs, her grandfather's legs riddled by bullets in the Civil War. Could it be that Elsie's grandfather was talking to you through your grandmother's body? The winnings? The winnings! But it doesn't have the bullets in it because it doesn't have the bullets in it because the, um, the men in black took it or they went missing. A project that you obsessed that has obsessed you for a long time and now you think you know why. You decide not to think about it too much or, or too much about Elsie, her grandfather, the moles, and the men in black. You're terrified that behind all your decisions something more than your own free will was at work. Come on. Oh, that was a come on. Let me show you this. The the winnings. The winnings. <laughs> I can't do it. The winnings. Quick, let's get her out. No. It's still not working. What do you mean it's not working? It has some kind of sef safety mechanism. And I still haven't been able to assemble it successfully. Here. See? I see some chicken scratch and some circuit boardery. The elves. You look at Lou with curiosity. On the blueprints. There. What's the puzzle? Those elves are the rubric of a secret society founded in the middle of the last century. It's no secret if you know about it, is it? <laughs> Lou doesn't answer you. Why the L? Some say it's the way of the... Some say it's the way of the night moves. On the chessboard. Others say it's because of Lewis Carroll. The author of Alice in Wonderland? Exactly. I mean, let them keep talking. I guess I... I want to know... I, 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 I like lore. Let's let them keep talking. Who am I? Am I Holt? I don't remember. Blue closes his eyes and holds a hand to the bridge of his nose and clears his throat. Can this guy be any more affected? A stick I found that weighed two pounds. I sawed it up one day. In pieces of eight equal weight. How much did each piece weigh? Well. Um, what, like 25 pounds? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody
everybody says a quarter of a pound, which is wrong. A riddle at this moment? Victoria strokes her chin, and Lee nods, her, nods his head slightly as, as if he's counting something. Do you think it's time for a riddle, Lou? Lou raises his hands and moves aside. You take a deep breath. No, I want to know! Okay, wait. It's not a quarter of a pound. So what? Are they all still... It has to add up to two, right? I'm gonna go to sleep dreaming about this now. I have to figure it out. It shouldn't be that hard to find the right configuration. I don't know if this whole is like this whole thing supposed to be this thing or like is it like a continuous pattern I mean... oh, okay I think it's the whole thing but for each row okay okay Oh, okay, so this piece, it's probably that one. This one's actually an L. Let's go back. This one's already an L, so let's... I think this is right. This took me like maybe like three minutes now. I don't know. I wasn't actually keeping track. I got. I, I was really quiet because I was just trying to think the pieces up. But like these are actually making like the figures now. So. Hmm. Yay! <laughs> Yay, I got it. I'm smart. I got it. Wallo. It only took me... How long did it take me, Future Nova? Thanks, Future Nova. See, I'm awesome. Although outside the creature's shouts are getting louder, you can't help but feel a certain happiness. The win is is finally complete. Now everybody out. <laughs> We're going outside to shoot these guys. Elsie stands next to the win is holding a rifle. Lee, Lou, and Victoria stand back a little. You crack your knuckles and take a deep breath. At the helm of the win stream. Oh, at the helm of the win steam powered machine. Machine gun, you feel something strange. You find it hard to put into words. It's as if somehow the present has given way to the past. Rabbit men. They are weak creatures. <laughs> Cannon fodder in the war against the upright beasts. Imagine getting caught. Well, let's just shoot that motherfucker. He's right there. Well, he's closer though. Goodbye!
Ooh, look at that cabbage patch. No? Oh. So you can shoot more than one if they're in line. Beware of the dogmen. There, behind the rabbit men. The dogmen are more resistant than the rabbit men. And if you hurt them without killing them, they get mad. Um. I can't curve the bullet, so I'll just shoot, I guess. <laughs> Eat this bullet! <laughs> Okay, so are you my, like, stand guard? You only have one bullet shot. I'm here to cover you, but don't get too confident. I can kill one upright beast, and then I need to reload. <laughs> they had to relocate inside the building. Hey, where are you going? Okay, those are dogs. Okay, so if I shoot these guys in the middle, they'll be dead. Then they'll move up one. Up one. Shoot this guy. He'll get pissed off. No, this should kill him. They get killed one hit. They get hit, killed with two. So maybe this one will run up. You'll shoot that. Then the bunny comes up. These guys come up. She ate. So I'll shoot these guys. She'll shoot this one. And then I can blast the other guy. Whoops. Goodbye. What is this? This is a moose man. The two men and the woman. Gone. Deserters. They can stay inside. What? What is this? How do I shoot this guy? You take a deep breath and try to focus. And those creatures over there? Moose men. If you manage to wound them without killing them, they go crazy and run like a stampede. You can take advantage of them to generate a chain effect. Stampede in which direction? Um, wait, so, what are you reloading for? You shot the one. Well, I guess we can try right now, then. And we can see which direction he stampedes. Oh, so he'll just go... So, oh, I didn't know he would just, like, I thought he was going to go straight up. Okay, then this is good. Dad, 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 stampede.
Oh, he goes. Okay. Goodbye. The Mothman. Oh, owl man. Also, that one guy that was like, "Hey, you like an owl?" That was probably an owl. Okay. Resist like dogmen or moosemen. But if you hurt them without killing them, they fly up to the front. So be careful. Well, let's just shoot the moose guy over here then. They fly to the front. They fly to the front. I thought if I- I thought that- Excuse me, I thought that I had the privilege of shooting him and- Because I was the one who attacked him, he wouldn't fly to the front and grab me. Well, let's shoot down. But if I shoot the center, it's gonna mow through these guys. Oh, maybe it won't get through. But then who's going to defend from over here? Because one, two, he takes away two. That's one, that's one. And then he's injured, and then he'll fly up. She'll shoot, but then the rabbit's up here. Right? I shoot one for the rabbit. One, two, one, two. Then the dog moves up. Oh, so we'll shoot the center. Left, left. So one, two. It'll kill this guy. She'll shoot this one. Stampede, and then so we're so we're good. We're good. I think we're good. Cause I'm thinking it'll shoot this, kill this guy. This one will attack. She'll shoot him. These are gonna move up, and then this one can boom, 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 and she can shoot that one. Yeah, yeah. It'll work. It'll work. Trust me. Bam. Yep. And then I shoot this guy, and then by the time she gets to us, okay. Oh, great. I can just kill you. Goodbye. You take advantage of a rare moment on the of calm on the battlefield to talk to Elsie. You shake your head from side from one side to the other. You know that Lou was the first to leave, and the helplessness eats you up inside. Go look for them. But if we're going to fight here, we fight together. Are they dead in there? And that wraps up today's transmission. I believe there's only like two chapters left. We're actually really close to the end. The The transmissions might be a little longer so we can wrap it up. Um, keep your antennas to the sky and look out for the next transmission. Nova signing off. Bye bye.